You and I with Rashmi Shetty is a simple attempt of bringing in stories of people you and I can draw inspiration from. Ordinary folks, extraordinary lives, their uniqueness and individuality that make them interesting to talk to and to listen to. A reaffirmation of the fact, open your eyes wider, the world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. Our guest today is Priyanka Panda, an IT professional turned energy healer. She believes her life's calling is to enable more people to awaken to their true potential as energetic beings who are conscious manifestors of their life. Whether it was quitting her career to follow her calling, going against family tradition to pursue a lesser known field of energy healing, or rejecting conventional education to travel school with her daughter, her life has been a tapestry of some bold and unconventional decisions. Let's catch up with her to know more. This is a two-part special with energy healer Priyanka Panda. In part two, she takes us through the magical world of duality, Ardhanarishwara as a concept and meditation. Let's listen to part two of the two-part special. I think these topics and questions can go on into hours and hours of discussion because they're so deep. I know I'm touching not even the tip of the iceberg, but the tip of the tip of the iceberg. And uh, this is done uh, with a lot of years of study and a lot of awareness that when you get into, when you're doing uh, the study, that takes you and leads you on into what... Uh, your purpose is and what your calling is but are the two also related the purpose and calling and the you know you said so many things you spoke about the memory that the soul carries that we are uh, spiritual beings on a human journey purpose legacy what is it that we are born here for and along with that comes even this whole concept of masculine and feminine energy and you spoke about attitudes like empathy and love and uh, they definitely fall under the feminine energy category and i know now with leadership most of the leaders masculine or feminine they bring out the feminine energy when they want to align with people in their team understand people work with empathy work with servant leadership so what is this energy concept of masculine and feminine energy and there is this beautiful concept even in Eastern philosophy called Ardhanarishwara, which speaks about the alignment of both the masculine and feminine. So is it a very a big question and can you give us a simple answer or should we have another episode on uh, just the Ardhanarishwara concept, Priyanka? Definitely, Rashmi. I mean, uh, talking about the the Narishwar concept, I can go on for hours <laughs> if provided you have the time. But I'll try to explain it in the you know the briefest amount of time as I can. So, and uh, I'm so glad you asked this question because it's something that is so close to my heart and it's something that I'm um, working on currently. Um, so we live in a world of duality. Okay, uh, so duality simply means that everything, every experience that we go on, every feeling that we have, that can be expressed as opposite polarities. You know, it can be expressed as love and hate. Um, if you have love, you will also have hate. If there is positivity in the world, there will also be negativity. And one beautiful concept of polarity, especially in terms of energy, if we describe it, is the concept of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So each and every individual, whether it's a man or woman, uh, all of us are composed of this divine feminine and divine masculine energies. 
and um, ancient cultures probably around the world had studied it in detail and uh, especially in india the vedic literature has described it so beautifully as um, if you read the shiva purana they have the story of ardha narishwar which essentially was a story of creation and um, you know in a very uh, basic uh, way if i can explain it so it says that before time existed before the universe existed there uh, you know shiva and parvati shiva and shakti were together in um, one form that was the ardha narishwar form and when the universe was um, when you when, when brahma wanted to create the universe he asked shakti to uh, come down into the universe and so that the universe can expand the universe and creation can happen they needed her energy and that's how shiva and shakti got separated and um, that's how um, that's how uh, shakti entered into this world as the energy of creation and um, and that is the topic of my latest book that i'm writing and the topic is the age of the devi is here um and it essentially talks about the rise and fall of the divine feminine energies in this world and how it is related to you and me so um you know the story of ardhanarishwar it describes in a very illustrated way of uh, how creation has happened so from my own intuitive experiences i have understood that um before creation started there there was just a singular consciousness which, which we call the different names some calls it you know we call it as souls in energy healing parlance and cultures around the world they call it shiva and they call it god and we call allah we call him with different names but it is true that he is one singular consciousness where this energies are not separated so he is the sea of consciousness and um, when it was time for the universe to begin so the the may he had this desire to experience the universe um, you know he may experience his creation from a different from a different angle he wanted to experience himself uh from a different perspective and that's a similar story that cultures around the world have uh, have also told it in their um in their literature so um you know so the first division from singular consciousness was into uh into duality so the singular consciousness moved into dual you know duality of consciousness and he um basically he put, he turned into the masculine and the feminine forces so the forces of the masculine and that was how that um how i like to describe as the second dimension of existence and from the second dimension of existence and from this masculine and feminine energies they combine together and form the third dimension which is the physical reality of matter that we that we live in and uh, it was the creative ability of shakti the creative ability of the divine feminine which gave rise to creation and which is still within us within each and every one of us and which is allowing us to create and expand so when we talk about energy there's uh, you know we look at everything holistically okay not just as a human perspective but everything well so when suppose a person like when a man is he's an artist and is creating an art the creative influence the creative energy that flows into his hands and that is the energy of shakti it's the energy of the divine feminine and the action uh, and the energy that he gets to perform the action of drawing that is probably um, the energy of the masculine and um, that is how we i like i recently wrote an article of the dance of shiva and shakti because you know it has been expressed so beautifully in our culture in temples and books but essentially to me at least in my personal opinion i feel it is expressing this dance of the masculine and feminine energies that is happening each and every moment within us as we create as we think as we perform as we act as we breathe so there is this combination of you know masculine and feminine this dance that is constantly happening within us as well as in the cosmos 
so um that is how i like to look at it so on uh, that coming to the concept of love and empathy so we are moving into a world where you will see there is a, a greater you know in greater interest on in among people to move towards a heart centered uh, you know a heart centered um leadership to move into a more empathetic world of um, live, living life because you know everything else has failed so in the last if i would say for the last 2000 3000 years we had been living a very masculine way of life the reason i call it masculine is because the masculine is really associated with this level of control discipline and uh, focus and you know having a goal oriented approach and there's nothing really um, wrong with that approach because it has brought human kind to the pinnacle of its you know to the pinnacle of its um pinnacle of advancement but according to me there's also been this imbalance between the masculine and feminine energies within us because the um we have you know the feminine is the energy of love and empathy in our heart she is the energy of the connection that we have with the environment she is the energy of mother earth so and in the last 2000 3000 years probably we have and probably more in the last 50 years we have lost this connection with mother earth and when we lose this connection there is an imbalance that is created within us you know when you don't respect the feminine energies when you don't respect the energy of love and empathy and so whatever imbalances happen within you those imbalances show up in the external world as well you know when we live in this world in the world of disconnect and that is why i feel most of the problems that we are facing in the world today whether it is poverty or whether it is ecological imbalances or whether it is environmental pollution everything is related if you see the root cause is basically we are living a disconnected life we don't um, consider the whole of you know the whole of earth or the whole of uh the whole ecology of the earth as a part of who we are and that is essentially what uh, you know um embracing the feminine energies means because when you lead a life of love and empathy you when you you move into a state of coherence so a state of coherence is basically vibrating from a um at a from a level of consciousness where you believe that everything that surrounds you right from the environment right to the people in the environment to the um animals and trees and the ecology everything is a part of you because um and i know it sounds little ambiguous when i say this but uh, uh, you know we say that we are living on the earth but in reality we are not living on the earth we are the earth and everything along around us our environment we are an essential part of the earth and uh, when we move back into state the state of connection we can live a more holistic life and the balance is returned so that's why i feel there should be more awareness about the feminine and the masculine uh, energies within us and the importance of leading a more balanced life because we are not only um, because it is not only going to change our life but it is also going to change the environment where we live and uh, that is how the human collective can grow consciously it's something that i believe in and uh, i know that uh, what you uh, did was uh, justify as much as possible about this beautiful concept of andana vishwara so thank you so much priyanka uh, that you made it so simple for us to get at least a feeler of what this entire concept is about uh, but what i am now interested in is uh, what is energy healing so as an energy healer what is it that you do in order to make sure that uh, the people who come to you are comfortable obviously they come to you because of some discomfort so what exactly are you working on when you call yourself an energy healer um, well definitely so um 
so as i just described about you know the human bio energy field so energy healing essentially says that um, any disease or disorder first starts at an as an imbalance in the energy field and this imbalance is caused by um, most of the times if not all are caused by our thoughts so what we as healers do is we try to bring the balance back in the energy field so when we so we look at it as the root cause of any disease or disorder so when the root cause is fixed then we move then the um, you know the particular manifestation in the body also gets healed but it is not as simple as that see when if you look at our um, you know any um, mainstream medical uh, science that whether it is western medicine or um, you know whether it is homeopathy or ayurveda um and the degree varies is varies but we all look at the human body we are all curing a certain aspect of the human body for example if there's a migraine we give them a pill for the migraine and um, or we uh, you know do some um, oil based massage therapy for the brain we give them some herbal um, supplements for the migraine but for us like for me as a healer when i look at someone with a migraine there are i can see different aspects of a migraine and probably one big aspect would be resistance to the flow of life the person probably is resisting to what um you know resisting to his own intuition resisting to what his purpose or path in life should be and that might result in a migraine that might result in a gastric um problem <clears throat> in the long run like it, see anything in the energy body doesn't immediately manifest in the physical body but if it becomes chronic when you are not constantly thinking thoughts that are not um in alignment with your true purpose the path and eventually they tend to you know affect the body so uh, the way i look at it is when you uh, solve like suppose i'm healing someone for migraine i tend to um, you know i tend to heal the root cause in the energy body try to give them tools and techniques including mindfulness and energy healing and um, tools such as you know hypnotherapy and pilates so i'm not only a uh, energy healer i use all the tools and techniques that i have that have you know all the wisdom that i have and i create a holistic approach to heal people okay i can also describe a bit about how it works so see you have talked asked me about energy healing so energy healing is comes in various forms and shapes there is reiki there is pranic healing and to a lot a lot of uh, you know um you some people even call um, you know acupuncture uh, and uh, acupherapy to be under to come under energy healing so people approach energy healing in various in various ways um but i also always tell my clients that energy healing is a complementary approach it is not a, a you know it is not something to um, It's, it should not be your main approach to healing so if you are under a doctor's supervision you should always consider energy healing as a complementary approach to medical supervision and i will tell you the reason i say this see most of the times we are so um you know we are so cruel to our bodies and we do it unknowingly so there is nothing you know i have any hard feelings about that because we are not even aware that the thoughts that we are thinking what a big impact it is causing on on how our body is trained you know see um, the science tells us that there is a constant rejuvenation of cells in your body okay and uh, your body basically can transform itself it can transform itself within a matter of months okay organs can transform themselves within a matter of months so healing is the natural ability of the body so all that we are doing through our any of our medical practices is we are um, probably giving the giving the body the boost it needs the immune you know, the giving the immune immunological system the boost it needs to heal itself so um 
and the body as i said energy affects matter you know thoughts uh, affect thoughts and energy feel that affects everything in the surrounding right right from the physical body to the environment the relationships so it is possible that you can use you know you can find to new thoughts and find to your new energy body to give to transform your physical body and it's not just about healing you can transform your body to look the way you want it to you can transform your body to um you know to f- be the best tool that you have to follow your life's purpose and it might be anything that you want it to be so i definitely my approach to energy healing is a very holistic approach and um, the reason i use these tools like hypnotherapy and past life um, not past life i use regression therapy basically and um, i use these tools because the brain can function in different levels okay the conscious waking state that we have that is the beta beta um, you know beta level of consciousness and um, when you know when we are in this deep state of meditation or just about to doze off we move into the alpha state of consciousness and beyond that when we are totally unconscious that's the delta state of consciousness and we also have gamma and a high beta states of consciousness so um so using hypnotherapy i tend to uh, you know take people from the beta level to the alpha level so the alpha le- level of consciousness is the plane where we go into when we in deep meditation or when we are just you know in the dream state we are just entering into the dream state so what happens is the alpha level is the level between your conscious brain and your subconscious brain so when you move into these levels of uh, you know in these levels of mind what happens is most of our life we are working uh, we are working with with subconscious patterns these patterns and habits that have formed from a childhood this thought pattern that have formed from a childhood so we are working from a subconscious pattern that we are not even aware of so when we go into these levels we can you know train our mind to think Uh, you to to change our thought patterns into into a way that works for us so that is why i use a combination of tools and and it depends a lot on what uh, the client needs and what is best for him or her and then i use this tools basically to find carve out a holistic approach to what will best suit them to meet their life's goals Thank you Priyanka for sharing so much about energy and I cannot resist the temptation but ask you uh in the last one and a half years the planet went through a lot with the pandemic just not seeing borders borders dissolved it was very clear it was man made and uh, nature did not want it like that the world is one we are one we are part of the same consciousness this all very evident when an invisible virus took over there has never been a time when death stared so directly at the human face like it has done uh, till recently the first wave was completely out of our bounds so it was only numbers but the second wave has more names and faces to the numbers that we are seeing in our country especially so this has there been an energy shift for this entire planet working like this and as an energy healer what is it that you see as a shift in energy in the last one and a half years so thank you for the question rashmi this is indeed a a very deep question and that and it's something that i can answer at many different levels because it's not just a simple question to answer so i and something i always tell my clients is i will you know i will share my perspective but um, i want people to hear this with an open mind and grasp what they get from their own perspective so as a healer and um, as an energy uh, you know from an upon perspective energy definitely there has been a shift of consciousness that has happened probably some to uh, probably between 1 to 2 years and we have moved into this age of consciousness 
where where as i was telling you know i talk about this in my book as well that is the age of the devi is here i feel that we are finally moving into a age where the divine feminine energies are rising again within us so what does it mean what does it really mean and it's not just something it's not just an esoteric concept i want people to hear me out and then form their own conclusions so what does the divine feminine mean yeah so when i say uh, you know we worship the divine feminine particularly in india hindus worship has her as the as shakti devi shakti we worship her in many different forms out of her main form is parvati uh, who is durga lakshmi and saraswati so what we often very often fail to realize that the power of goddess shakti even though we have you know we worship her in the form of a deity and we have durga puja every year we have navratris where we invite her into a house and we worship her but essentially she is not um, you know she is of course everywhere but she is what we essentially forget is the power of shakti is within us you know she lives within us as our own power and this is probably it will touch all the aspects that i had covered during this interview because you know it's the power of shakti that allows us to be in touch with our self and you know create and manifest the life we want it is her energy that um, you know that brings us the awareness when we are ready for it so it is the power of um, saraswati lakshmi and uh, durga who is not out there even though she is out there she is within us the power of saraksha and um, saraswati is the power of the awareness that is needed for us to move into the state of alignment alignment is you know when we talk about alignment the power of durga or parvati is the power needed for us the immense power needed for us to move into the zone of you know trust and surrender and that is probably the point where we break free of this mold and move into a into a state of abundance that i so described i know in the previous parts of my interview and abundance is in the invariably lakshmi that's who are we worship as lakshmi so why am i saying that in the for the last 20 to 30 years we have seen this in our lives that how the um, consciousness the collective human consciousness has moved into um, into including more diversities into our lives and into our perspective for example you will see movements like black lives matter you movement for lgbtq rights there are movements for uh, you know for understanding and including neuro diversity into the corporate culture so why is this happening it is happening because the human consciousness has moved from one level of functioning to the next level of functioning and uh, it has to see whenever consciousness shifts whenever the human collective shifts it is not a, a you know it's not an abrupt process there are uh, this process of moving up into a certain al- point of alignment post which it the shift happens very rapidly and i feel this is what the time that we are living in currently is happening we have you know prepared the ground and now we are in this verge of shifting from one level of consciousness to the next level of consciousness so going forward what we will see is within a very short period of time we will see the human collective consciousness is taking um if i can use the word taking a quantum leap so the leaps are happening within a very short period of time so if you just see up the timeline of a past 50 years the life that our grandmothers used to live and the life that we live are probably you know um, there's a difference of 
hundred to two hundred years. So we have shifted the time within fifty years. We have shifted. I would say at least half a century as far as technological advancements are concerned. And going forward, you would see that technol the technological advancement is also happening in a very rapid way. So I know this will sound very weird when I say this, but I see a close connection between the technological advancement we have and the conscious evolution of the human collective. You see, um, when the internet arrived in the 2000s and uh, when it grew and you know grew um, like so grew like a you know, it grew so vast within the span of a decade. and it connected the entire world so if a single individual voices like uh, you know one movement somewhere in america now is causing a movement around the world one event happening in delhi is causing people around the world to awaken and raise their voices so in a way it has in the internet has connected the entire human collective and that has allowed the human collective consciousness to grow at an unprecedented rate so you and the way i look at technological advancement um you know it has been a boon for the collective evolution as well and in the going and in the coming future is future also we will also see that um the you i mean um, there will be rapid advancements in tech in the field of technology and there will be quantum leaps if i can use the word in human consciousness levels as well so definitely where we are now by the time you know our i hope i really i really hope and uh, because see future is a possibility you can no one can predict for you know with 100% accuracy of what is going to happen but i just wish and i hope that um, this you know i hope that our children they grow up into this world of um of a highly conscious um, highly conscious human collective where love and empathy rules and um, where leadership is all about heart centered leadership so that's what i think about uh, you know about what the consciousness evolution has been Thank you so much, Priya. Okay, I have a question here, uh, Priyanka, uh, regarding meditation. So uh, many people feel that meditation, in a way, aligns them to a lot of uh, non-aligned thoughts. And uh, does meditation also become part of this healing process for the self? uh when you are in that state of complete alignment uh how powerful and what is the need for meditation especially now because there's so much negativity around us and there's so much we are consuming very unconsciously uh be it media be it newspapers or any kind of social media there's so much we are absorbing can meditation or will meditation kind of bring in a alignment within ourselves when we are disturbed so much by the external definitely um definitely i mean meditation is that one way i won't say one way but it's a very powerful tool that we have in bringing us you know in basically and i use this word a lot of time but it is very important for me um because meditation is one tool where probably we are it's a very powerful tool for us to go within so when we shut down so basically what meditation means to me is shutting down our five physical senses it's not possible to completely shut it down but ideally that's how people meditate they put on headphones they close their eyes switch off the light and uh, basically what they are doing is they are shutting off all this you know external input stimuli that is coming into us and moving inwards moving within and uh, it is a first step to move into alignment so yes definitely meditation helps but um, 
you know now in days the word meditation has become so cliche that people have started having resistance to it so what i like to tell people um is don't worry about the terminology you know it's not really important for you to sit at a place and put on candles and uh, you know put on agarbatti and candles and then this focus on one thing like people ask me should i chant some mantras or what should i do so you can meditate with your eyes open move into nature move into a park sit down under a tree touch the tree walk barefoot yeah um, walk barefoot on sand walk barefoot on grass just become becoming aware you know not becoming aware of that current moment is a great way to meditate you know it is not really important for us to uh, sit in mem- you know sit in dhyana mudra or meditation definitely if you can do it well but if you feel too overwhelmed to sit in a place and meditate then do anything anything that can move your awareness back into the present moment because you know that's all there is to meditate i mean i won't say there's always lots to meditation but one important aspect of being in alignment and one important aspect of why people in alignment are able to live a joyful and blissful life is because they are not constantly oscillating between the past and future they are in the present moment and i can tell you rashmi and i can give it to you in writing when you are aware when you are aware of this present moment no amount of negativity no amount of thoughts can affect you because you know the brain is composed of only memory so the brain can either live in the known past or the predict i mean not the brain but the mind the mind can either live in the known past or the predictable future so when you are in the present you are a no mind and that is the first step of moving into a zone where you are where you awaken yourself to your complete to your full possibility Wow so that's what all the mindfulness practitioners talk about living in the now living in the present very beautifully brought to that point and coming back to your now and present uh thank you for this entire talk priyanka towards the end of our conversation there's a norm that we follow that i ask uh, three takeaways from life that you have arrived at uh when you look back to what you have been through till today uh, any three takeaways that you feel you'd like to leave us with so i think the three biggest takeaways from my life um would be that the human being is capable of healing itself and uh, disease and disorder is probably a result of me being in um this alignment within himself the human brain is a powerful tool that we have been gifted with to create and manifest the life that we want and lastly one of the biggest uh, you know biggest beliefs that i live with every day of my life is the is you know is the approach that i have my you know that i have absorbed that i have created that is called as the 3a approach and this 3a approach is where where i believe awareness leads to alignment and when there is alignment it invariably leads to abundance so this entire when we understand this approach of awareness alignment leading to abundance we are able to transform our lives uh, in a way that fulfills our purpose and that moves us into a place where we understand that we are human beings with you no know, we are super human being with unlimited possibilities i love the 3a approach it's beautiful it's powerful even to think 
that it's all within our access but many of us are not even aware what is around us uh, is a very beautiful note priyanka to end and uh, just the thought that you don't even have to look outside to bring out what you can truly be is a powerful note to end on uh thank you so much priyanka for your time for your sharing and this has been a very fascinating conversation for me uh i don't know how i found you but now after talking to you i know it's just that our energies met in the universe and the universe has a way of beautifully connecting different balls of energy that we are and uh I just want to bow down with the all humility to the universe for putting us together. Uh thank you so much for all that you so generously shared and made simple for us to understand. Um all I can say is I'm completely humbled. Thank you so much Priyanka for all that you shared. Thank you Rashmi it has been my pleasure and um I too am truly humbled to be here. with you and share these things with the listeners of you and I thank you for having me with this we come to the end of part 2 of the two part special with energy healer priyanka panda do send in your feedback and guest suggestions to rashmi.thirdeye@gmail.com that is r a s h m i dot t h e t h i r d e y e at gmail dot com